everyone. Uh, welcome to Doodle Therapy. It's great to see you all here. Um, if you're joining us live, definitely please say hi in the chat. And, um, you know, we'd love to give you guys a shout out and say hi back. Uh, maybe share where you are joining us from. And because the theme of this week is all about making comics, I'd love to also know um, what was your favorite comic growing up in your childhood? So um, if you're joining us live, please feel free to introduce yourself with that information. Uh, my name is Alice. I am an illustrator and muralist based in San Francisco. I am your host here at Doodle Therapy, an interactive drawing show here on Adobe Live. And um, I would say my favorite comic was probably Naruto growing up. Um, and we're, we are joined with a very, very special guest, the one and only Deborah Lee. Hi, Deborah. Hi, nice to see you. Yeah. Thank you so, for having me. Yeah, it's so awesome to have you here. So we are going to, you know, talk a little bit more about myself and Deb in just a second. Um, but first I wanna, you know, welcome everyone who's joining us live. If you are um, brand new to the stream, welcome. Basically, Doodle Therapy is an interactive drawing show here on Adobe Live. We're on every other week. And as you may have noticed, um, starting in this second half of the year, we will be featuring a guest artist every week. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And the way it works is um, every week we have a different doodle prompt. So that's a theme that we dive into. In the past, we've done color, um, painting landscapes, character design. And so this week, our special theme is drawing comics with Deb. Um, and because it's an interactive show, you're also welcome to draw along. So um, if you are in the mood to learn a little something about drawing comics, um, you know, please feel free to join us. And if you end up making something, uh, we would love to see it. You can post it on the internet and just tag me at at by Alice Lee. So that's kind of like the high level gist. Um, hi to everyone joining us. Hi to um, Flo from Vancouver, Jason. Hi to Mercedes, um, to Shirley and Laura and Flo and Nix. It's great to see everyone. So we're just gonna dive right in. Um, Deb, it's great to have you. Hi. I'm throwing up Hello. some, I'm putting up some of your um, artwork on the screen. Could you tell us a little oh bit gosh. about yourself? Sure. So, um, hey, everyone, thanks for coming, uh, taking your time out of the day to see this. Um, I am a freelance illustrator and graphic novelist, sort of new at this, uh, based in Oakland, California. Um, I've been freelancing since January. So I used to work in tech as a designer and illustrator. Then I kind of zoomed out to work on my graphic novel with, yeah, woo, um, for, uh, with First Second. Um, which is really exciting and I'll be basically working on that for like the next year and a half now. So it's publishing in 2022. It changed to 2022 Sorry. and yeah, um, really exciting working on some freelance projects along the way. So yeah, um, feels really good to just be kind of free, I guess. Yeah. And we can talk about that too, because I also work, used to work in tech and so Oh, kind yeah. of like this former illustrators from tech club. Um, so um, yeah, here's some of Deb's work in the corner. Um, you did this like awesome book cover um, yeah. and some of these other pieces as well. Super beautiful. Um, what was your favorite uh, com comic growing up to read? Okay, so um, I don't know if this is actually, well, it is technically a comic, I guess, but um, I think this was in 2005, 2004, but it's this huge book and I have it right here. It's called, oh wow. It's called The Invention of Hugo Cabret and it became a movie in 2011 and it was nominated for an Oscar, but it's like this thick book and a lot of it's text, but the reason it's so thick is that it's all, ugh, it's all like, a lot of it's are, are wow. all just like images. And wow. these are like, really beautiful like wow. pencil drawings and it's just like each I, I believe like the intent of the book is to make it feel like you're watching a movie so I take a lot of inspiration from Brian Selznick who um wrote and illustrated this book for my graphic novel as in I go like ham on <laughs> every that is amazing page. yeah but yeah it um it also was a book that um, it didn't really get me into comics right away, but 
it was a book that really influenced me to go into like some kind of realistic drawing at the time. Um, so I remember tracing some of the pages to practice. It's beautiful. I also recommend the movie. It's just like visual, like so visually dense and gorgeous and totally worth the Oscar nomination. Can you say the name again yeah. so people can hear, uh, write it down in the chat? Yes. So the book is called The Invention of Hugo Cabret, but like C-A-B-R-E-T. Um, right. But the movie is just called Hugo. Oh, cool. So that should be not that, yeah. uh, it shouldn't be that hard to remember. I yeah. Think. And that's a great segue into talking about comics, which we will in a sec, about all the different forms that comics and like sequential art can take, um, which we'll jump into in a sec. Um, and also a little bit about me. I am your host here at Doodle Therapy. Um, like I mentioned, we're on every other week and we're bringing on special guest artists um, to feature for every week that we're on here on Adobe Live. Um, I'm a muralist and an artist based in SF. So here's some of my work. Um, you have seen it at places like the Asian Art Museum, Phil's Coffee, Coach, etc. And I have never um, made a comic or any kind of sequential graphic art before. So it's I'm really excited to um, like draw side by side with you, Deb. And also, um, if any of you are also joining along and drawing along, whether it is with the comics theme that we're doing or just working on your own stuff, like feel free to ask us any questions. I'll probably be asking Deb lots of questions um, and it's fun to just have a conversation about it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna head over to the drawing section now. Um, so Deb, you were talking a little bit about like, you know, what you loved about uh, the illustrator Cabret's work. Um, and mm -hmm. I really loved your example because I think when a lot of people think of comics, they think of the most mainstream version of what um, sequential art is to much of mainstream America. So you might think of like the Sunday newspaper comic strips like Garfield, kind of like the slapstick humor, or you might think of like yeah. um, superhero type of books. Mm -hmm. And those are totally, um, you know, very rich worlds, but only um, I feel like one angle of what like a comic can refer to. And so when we're talking about comics, we're really just referring to it as like sequential art. So, you know, multiple illustrations of some format that tell some kind of story. Um, mm -hmm. What have, what are some thoughts that you have about like comics in general and um, like this perception? Maybe we can just define what we mean when we say comics. Yeah, I would say comics is anything that is like more than one image. Um, I, it's so loose and there's a lot of experimental comics nowadays that it can pretty much be anything as if it's just like two images, like maybe it's like a duck and like a plate of Campbell's soup. Like that, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but if it's two images and it feels like, or like maybe like those two images like are important, they're telling a story and we don't know yet. Um, but I think it's literally, it can just be so abstract. Like you don't need to have people. It can just be a bunch of shapes and stuff. And that's still a comic. Um, because when you're looking at two images, you're kind of associating like there's a pattern there, but your, your brain is trying to figure that out, but you might not quite know it, what it is exactly. So I think that's the beauty of comics is that you can just like make it whatever you want it to be. And it, as long as it's again, like at least two images. Yeah, um, I love I love that definition of like it's a sequence of images that are yeah conveying an idea. It could be silly and not make any sense, or it could be like touching and serious and moving. You know. Yeah, and I think a lot of um, I mean comics are again like they can take whatever form, and you can go as like I I think. Um, when people think of comics, they're thinking of like something like Garfield, which is, you know, like very stylized, like very like, I guess, cartoony, but there's also stuff from like DC or Marvel. And those drawings are pretty realistic, I would say, like on the spectrum. Um, but honestly, like you can literally just make a like comic about a bunch of patterns and shapes and that's still considered a comic. Um, yeah. There's some good artists that I think of that do that really well. Sequence. Um, and I yeah. have on the screen, on my side of the screen, some 
um, of Deb's really beautiful comic work, um, which you can check out on her Instagram or on Twitter. Oh! Oops, actually, there's no ad in that URL. Um, but I think oh, this is like a fine. really cool example of like, you know, creating a beautiful comic art and pushing the form and the structure of sequential art to be both um, narrative and telling us, you know, type of story, but also it's like just truly touching and beautiful. And I think, I feel like some of these subject matters are more on the serious side than what you would mm. like see uh, next to like Garfield's in the newspaper. And so, so this is just to illustrate that there's lots of different like tones that you can take with um, creating sequential art. So yeah. Yeah. I usually go from like, <laughs> it's usually stuff like something about my eyebrows like lifting me up and flying me away like something as like completely out of nowhere like that or it can be something about like here's all the really heavy trauma and depression I faced when I was growing up and still dealing with um so mm -hmm. it's literally going like from zero to a hundred all the time like there's no I wouldn't say I have like necessarily a certain topic that I like to stick to it just can be anything yeah yeah, I think that's like a great note to um, like start our comics drawings part of the stream on, which is like yeah. basically when we're referring to comics, we're not trying to say it should be this type or this style or this tone. It's it's like a sequence of images, two or more, um, could big or small. It could be as short as you know two panels, or it could be as long as a graphic novel, like the ones that Deb is working on. Um, and it's just about conveying some kind of idea or story through those images. So if you'd love to, if you'd like to join us this week on our comics prompt, um, basically Deb and I are starting from scratch our own um, comics. Uh, they're more on the short form side. And so um, you'll get to see us go from start to finish, um, like sketch format to more like final rendered style of image. And if you'd like to join, we would love to, you know, draw along with you and feel free to ask any questions along the process. Totally. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're just going to um, jump in. Um, yeah, Alice, what's your, what's your comic about? Oh, thanks for asking. I was going to ask you the same thing. Um, <laughs> so my comic is um, based on a quote by the poet Rumi. And um, the quote says, you are the universe in ecstatic motion. Um, and it's basically inspired by my boyfriend. Um, and, uh, it's just like a little letter that I wanted to write to him. Of, um, I think that like, we all have tiny universes inside us. So I wanted to draw the silhouette of this girl and have all these characters with, you know, universes blooming within their, their shape. And then the final images, the background has this blooming universe. Um, how about That's yours, Deb? Uh, mine uh, again makes no sense. <laughs> I love, I love like how you know, like, like I said, like it can, as long as it's a sequence of images, it counts. Uh, so, um, I've been inspired by a couple of things lately, and one of them is the recent release of the Heavenly album that is Phoebe Bridgers. Uh, she mm -hmm. is one of my favorite artists right now, and she's extremely experimental, and her lyrics are divine. And one lyric that just Kind of sticks with me a lot is the doctor put her hand over my liver she said my resentment's getting smaller i don't really remember what that lyric is from exactly in that album but it's so sweet and as for the images uh, i live in oakland so i live um so we're close to lake Merritt, and in this season we get a lot of canadian geese and they're just everywhere and there's goose poop everywhere and <laughs> um i I'm kind of scared of them, but I feel like there's something really sweet and poetic about just like, I don't know, being like surrounded by these animals and having them welcome you as their own. Mm -hmm. um, again, I have a slight fear of geese. They Some of them have hissed at me before, so I don't yeah. want to mess with them. Some geese um, started chasing me and my dog once. <laughs> that's so terrifying. <laughs> I, I, like when I... Um, Oh, I would run like the heck out of there as fast as possible because they're yeah. huge. I was like, let's um, get out of here, Mochi. <laughs> get out. Um, I, I run. I run yeah. a lot. So whenever I pass them, I like to try to run a little faster. 
Actually, Deb, if you don't mind zooming out a bit, I think we can't really see the oh, sure. um, right side of and then moving it moving the it over a little bit to the, uh, the the right. Yeah. Um, me... Just to see your whole image. I mean, I really like how you are pairing this imagery with um, these really beautiful words. It's um, it's so like vivid to me. So I love it. Thank you. I love yours as well. Thanks. Um, we actually got a question a little bit earlier that from the chat that I really enjoyed. And I, I feel like oh. um, it's on on theme with a lot of what you and I have talked about um, in the past. Mm -hmm. And so McNeil Chapman asks, um, I have trouble sometimes just getting started working. Do you ever have this experience? And if so, what do you do to get working? Um, which is a great question. Thank you for asking that, yeah. McNeil. Um, so I think especially fun. as like, as sorry, especially as like freelance oh, no. independent artists, like, you know, that kind of self-discipline and keeping a structured schedule on your, and you setting it and being your own boss is like particularly relevant. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time I am being pushed by deadline after deadline, like AKA this week. Um, but I think, um, so in truth, like this comic was actually a little bit hard to start. So Alice, I don't think I told you this, but I actually did like have the format for this comic like about a couple months ago, um, but I haven't really touched it since, but like I wanted to get it in. So I just like, like slapped in a couple of panels and just drew like a really fast, like literally like it was incomprehensible. I just like drew like, like a very vague figure of like a girl and some geese and I'm like all right like at least I have something if I feel like working on something I'll just go back to it later there's no rush um mm -hmm. but yeah with something as like uh like like concrete as a freelance project like yeah like we have to um we have to it. like just do it like you have to have yeah. a good time management thing also, I didn't realize that we're starting, so I'm going to oh, do that now. Yes. Um, <laughs> Whoops. We'll, we'll just be starting and drawing through the whole stream. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, uh, lots of people in the chat are saying that they too have had terrifying geese experiences. So, uh, so I can relate to that too. <laughs> I mean, in um, a way, like even pigeons are like kind of terrifying, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they are. I'm like, just scared so, of getting They're just so on. used to animals. So I figured something out and I've tried to do this again, but if yeah. you have like a very snake-like motion with your arm around a squirrel, it will come to you. Like it will, oh. you will, it will come to you. And I've tried this and it followed me. It's kept following me and squirrel? it eventually climbed on my shoe. Yeah, a squirrel just like climbed on my shoe and I like screamed and I kicked it off. Like, I think it was okay, but it scared me so much. I was not expecting that. Um, Wait, that's so random. Yeah. How did you find if out you, that making a circular motion with your hand attracts you, squirrels? Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it this, like, in this chat. But it goes, like, if you go like this to a squirrel, somehow I think, like, it, its brain cannot process that it can do this. It, like, it, it, it can't process that motion. So I guess it just hypnotizes it. But... It, it, it works like I've, I've tried it and it's really scary and I don't know I for some reason I can't get it to work again but it, it works I it, it confirmed okay uh that's scary I'll try not to do that yeah don't do it <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they're so terrifying like I yeah. felt its claws on my leg and I'm like no 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 no, no, no. time to time to leave yeah uh yeah I'll definitely try not to do that around squirrels and geese um, yeah, thanks to Stone no. Cedar who uh, joined us on the last stream. It's great to see you here again um, from Iowa on the Mississippi River. Hello. I also have a question Hi. to those joining us live. Um, let us know if like the music is ever too loud um, or if there's anything with the volume. I saw some people saying earlier in the stream um, they you know restarted their browsers. So just let us know uh, and we'll try to you know troubleshoot that. Um, I was actually wondering, Deb, so, you know, as I was making this comic sketch, and I'm sure those who are also drawing along slash working on comics in general may be able to relate, I actually, like, realized that it's 
hard, much harder than I thought to make comics. Like, uh, I didn't think it was easy, but it was. It took a lot of you know thinking around pairing the right imagery with the text and all that. And so I was wondering, like, how do you generally approach writing a new comic? Do you just go with the flow, or do you have a structure before you get into it? Do you lead with the text and then let the imagery like get shaped to that? Or do you lead with the imagery and then like shape the text to that? Or is it somewhere in between? Like, I'm curious what your personal I, preference is. Yeah, so it definitely depends on the context of like, but for most of the time, the text usually does lead the image. Um, mm -hmm. For this, like even, even something as like nonsensical as pairing like a goose girl with like a, like a really like emotional music lyric. Um, I had some sketches before where you know, I, I think I deleted it, but I knew I wanted to keep the left one as it is, um, but I wasn't mm. sure what to do with the right one. And one of them was like, I, I did a few ideas, but even there was just some things that didn't work, even though like it kind of made sense but it didn't like I think one of them was the girl is like a smaller version of herself and she's like being nestled like around like a circle of geese but like and I think that is really sweet but for some reason it didn't work um okay but yeah I would say usually I do start with a text and uh like kind of go from there um but the makes sense. hardest part of yeah like the hardest part of the um, process for me is just like actually drawing it out. Cause you have to like, mm. not only get, you know, if you're drawing a comic about, you know, a character or place you have to be able to tackle, um, you have to be able to tackle like all the different poses and perspectives. Like you would have to like have a good idea of, you know, like how certain angles work. So what I do, right. um, and like, this is kind of a controversial technique is that I take Ooh. a ton of reference photos. Um, and, you know, like a lot of people are against like tracing or anything, but I, get, I believe that if it's your own photo and especially if you're not, if you're not studying like certain drawing technique, if you're not, if you're, if what you're trying to do is save time and like tell a story. I think it's fine to like work off of reference photos, like even yeah. as close to tracing, assuming you know, um, assuming you know how to best work from a photo because like photos become really warped on camera. Um, oh. So I think, yeah, yeah. Like it gets really weird and wonky if you trace directly from a photo. So just being really smart about like what you know is working or not working and just like working off of those reference photos as closely as you want, assuming you're not trying to learn from anything is like yeah it's fine like I take photos I take reference photos of my partner all the time and I'm like all <laughs> right now pretend you're reaching up for something and then I'll take yeah. a photo of that and I'll use that um that's, because that's like hilarious I might yeah because like it takes me <laughs> I mean like especially when I'm working on my graphic novel it takes like like eight hours um recorded time to get a page done and that in mm. real time is like 12 hours so I'm working like 12 hours a day for one page and right you know it just doesn't make sense to just like be like okay but am I like let's test my anatomy skills like when you don't really have to do that like that's not the point of the book it is the point of the book is to tell a story not to show how like good you are at perspective Sure, that makes sense. So, yeah, that is my very heated rant about. I'm surprised that this is a um, what is a spicy take? Like, um, it yeah. seems kind of uh, like a just good idea. I think you should definitely avoid like tracing or copying other people's work and posting that. Yeah. But if it's your own like hand, like hey, that's a I mean, that's a technique, right? I would say like. If you want to heavily reference someone else's image, like do it with extreme caution. Extreme um, caution. Like, yeah. yeah. So something that I do if I'm really stuck is like maybe I find a photo with like a really interesting perspective that has nothing to do with um, the image. Like, let's say I'm trying to draw like my my bedroom from like a really interesting angle, but I can't figure mm -hmm. out how to get the perspective to work. So if I find another image of like here's a library and like this perspective is really interesting maybe I'll 
work from that perspective but like all everything else is different like the walls are different so mm. and like there's really no way you can really look at that and be like oh that is plagiarism i i don't know yeah. like don't quote me on this but just be very 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 careful when it comes to other people's images if it's your own image go ham like i don't no one will care but as long as you get it right i guess yeah i i read something recently by um i reread this wonderful post that um jessica hish wrote she's a lettering artist yeah. about mm -hmm. like you don't want to make work and then have someone else's first reaction to be like "Ooh, this looks a lot like blah 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 you know yeah. like that's oh yeah that's kind of like a sign of like "Ooh, maybe i should like examine examine my um process a little bit um but yeah i think like making your own references is makes a lot of sense i yeah i mean i oh. think there's some i think it also could be cult cultural too like for example i'm i do a lot of murals and um there's kind of like this um uh people get into mural making in a lot of different ways um one way is through street art and graffiti art um and it's really cool because i've gotten to meet a lot of artists who came from the street art world and scene and then you know through murals um and i think that like for a lot of the like old school kind of OG style street artists, um, they consider uh, projecting your artwork and then tracing it to be a um, like a sign of like, you know, you didn't actually do it legit, you know? It's like freehand is the only way to go. And so uh, I totally respect that if that's, you know, their opinion and they want to do it their way, but okay. I don't I don't like have that mentality towards my own work. And so I think, I think it's partly like cultural and you know, just like that's kind of the rules of the world that they came from. Um, so maybe it's just like a different, uh, it's people who are saying like, don't use reference photos or like sit, coming from a different world or a different perspective. Yeah, I mean, I, my work improves significantly if I use reference photos. So, mm. I mean, I am so bad at drawing cars, but when you look at a reference photo and draw cars from there, it just looks a thousand times better. And yeah, like, I mean, oh no, I was going to say like, there's just so many things where it's like, you don't know what it looks like. Really? You, your brain just kind oh, of filled sure. it in like animal hind legs. Have you ever tried to draw oh like God. the hind leg of a dog? <laughs> it's the most bizarre I, thing. It's, it's like this. It's like so weird. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it goes backwards, like just stuff like that, where it's like, I don't like have a mental map of what dog hind legs or like automobiles look like. So using reference photos is just a good idea, I feel. Oh, you know what I do? I sometimes, so if recently I had to draw like a, a person, basically like me, because it's a memoir, uh, um, like running towards the camera. And I'm like, I don't know mm -hmm. how to pose this right. So I have like 10 videos on my- Oh, cool ipad of where it's just me like a video running to the camera and i would like kind of go back and look at the frames and like see which frame looks good for a reference mm. so to every to everyone except um especially my partner it looks like it looked kind of freaky because i'm like because they're like what are you running away from like why are you running <laughs> to your ipad like 10 times but um it's really helpful and like if you want to get the motion of how your hair moves when you're in the wind and stuff like it it provides really good information about that Makes sense yeah yeah so use reference photos if you want to um yeah i also want to say hi to ali afsol for joining i think you've joined before in the past so it's great to see you again um and for anyone who's listening to our conversation if you have any questions about deb um deb's process or even what we're up to right now and about illustration in general and life in general, feel free to ask. I always really enjoy equally the conversations that are about like the artistic technique, like, oh, this is how I got this sort of effect, as well as the conversations about like creative confidence, um, having new ideas, how to start, how to balance life stuff with art stuff. You know, I just, I think it's um, my goal with this pod, uh, with this um, stream is just to like, you know, have real talk with drawing. So yeah. feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Chill out. Chill out, relax. Chill out, bro. 
Yeah. I'm curious. Um, so we talked a little bit about, um, I, I did ask what everyone's favorite comics are. And I'm curious if anyone has any favorite comics currently, like if you have any uh, favorite like mangas, for example, or um, graphic novel series, uh, feel free to share it in the chat as we're on this comics theme. Um, what's yours, Alice? Oh yeah, um, mine is probably Naruto. Um, yeah. I read Naruto, like no joke, for 10 years. Like <gasps> 10 years where every week I logged on to the Naruto like translation website <laughs> and read, you know, 20 pages that always led to a cliffhanger. And oh like, my God, yeah. And then once in a while there, there would be no comic because it was like a holiday in Japan that I didn't know about. Um, no. Yeah. Um, oh, McNeil Chapman says study fair use guidelines like Shepard Ferry, who, um, for those who don't know, he is a really uh, prominent uh, mural artist as well as like political activist through his art. Um, most notably, he made the Obama Hope poster. Um, you know, the really oh, wow. stylized one that's like, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. vector. Um, and so he based that image off of a photograph that I believe like Getty or the Associated Press uh, photographer took. And so that photographer, I think he had to settle with him out of court because <gasps> it was oh. like pretty, it was like likeness based on that. Um, Yikes. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like that's the thing. It's like if you're trying to use uh, someone else's photograph like I would in that situation I would have like um gotten like three or four three or four photographs and like somehow reference off of those so it's not really clear like that it's really clear that you're not trying to chase from one person yeah um yeah I would say when in doubt like mix up your sources and try to pull from sources outside of your industry so yeah. that way um it becomes more of a synthesis as opposed to a uh, like likeness study. Yeah, I think that's um, also a really good thing for uh, like art as well. Like if you're finding inspiration for another from like a, an artist, like pretty good idea to um, uh, how would I put this? Like find inspiration from more than one artist, especially like artists who aren't even alive right now. Because um, yeah, yeah, like that's another thing. Like I've been finding a lot of inspiration from Art Nouveau, like Jay Carlos, who did all these like magazine illustrations. Like granted, some of them are like pretty racist. So like, be careful, um, but they're so incredible. And I think, I believe uh, they did that for the, in the twenties, but they're just so good. And I've been taking a lot of inspiration from that. And like um, other artists named Erte, uh, who, Erte, who was also Art Nouveau, but so good. And I can't believe I didn't stumble upon their works before either. Mm. So um, definitely check those people out. Yeah, that's a great point. I think studying from like the old masters, like the the yeah. the master Pokusai. painters. Yeah. yeah. Um, for example, like instead of, I think for example, we both came from tech illustration. And so you know, these trends are very easy to spot. Oh, yeah. There's like two popular trends per year uh, that last <laughs> for a few years. Um, and so I remember when oh, I was setting out. Uh, I'm not. I mean, Alice knows. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, it's just the nature of the industry. But um, for example, like a lot of people tend to copy the prominent um, illustration, the prominent tech brands. Uh, I remember when I started out, a lot of people copied or drew inspiration from like Google's house style. Um, but I would say like, if you want to take their like very geometric vector based shape based style, like instead of studying Google, why don't you study their source, which is probably like the Bauhaus movement, you know, um, or that's a good point. Trace yeah. it back, you know, trace, trace it back to the origin because, um, once you get into the habit of doing a copy of a copy of a copy, like the industry then starts to be a bit of an echo chamber. Um, yeah, well, no, yeah, like, yeah. uh, I remember one of my friends, uh, like, has a thing. I think they published this, but it's basically like um, 
There's a book about drawing animals from like very geometric shapes that was published oh. in Japan in like the early 1900s. Um, but that's basically like the same thing that everyone's trying to do like on Dribble, where it's like, you're, here's a fox, I'm making it from like a million different circles and triangles. Um, yeah, like, like you know, just... you can just. Oh, sorry. But that was like, no, that was like literally done already in in like Japan, like uh, like more than a hundred years ago. So it's not really anything new that you're trying to do. Yeah, or like go to the source and study the pro, like go study it from Charlie Harper's work, for example. Um, oh, yeah. Instead of like the dribble, oh, Charlie Harper dribble pop, is so good. popular page. Um, I'm actually um, excited about some of the responses that we're getting in the chat about um, favorite uh comics favorite you know sequential art series graphic novels mangas so um reverb mike says run lola run is a movie from the 90s that i guess they liked um okay and uh kathy yang says longtime favorite novel is arrival by sean tang um, wait 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 i have it i have oh. it right here <laughs> nice um, let me show it to the chat because it is gorgeous. Like I like, I, I would say like these two artists are so good at pencil drawings at like what they do. But this is like one panel. What is that? It's a whole oh, drawing. Oh wow! And Wowzers! It's and it's just like so. It's so beautiful and like it's completely wordless, but you can still get a really good idea of like. It's wordless, but like. It's, it's like, you don't have to translate it. Like everyone knows what it's about when you read it and mm. so good. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend that one as well. Um, I know Sean Tan used like, a, someone told me that they use like a million different reference photos. So again, don't be afraid to use reference photos. Yeah. Like he um, like hired models to do that, like to take photos. Mm. For his book. Um, Hello. So um, we can we can also go into, you know, as we develop our pieces, we can go into the way we set things up as well. But I did get a question in the chat from Tara Yazdani asking, saying mandatory chat chat question: um, What brushes are we using, and do we have any faves? Um, wait, what was the second second part of the question? What brushes are we using and do we have any faves? So I can start. I'm using um, Kyle's brushes. They're mm -hmm. um, awesome. They are free if you have Creative Cloud. Um, if you're in Photoshop, you just have to um, go to your brushes panel, hit the little hamburger menu, and then hit get more brushes. And then that leads you to um, the page where you can download all of his brushes. So I think I'm using a pastel brush, but I was um, like, like an idiot one day and I actually renamed all my brushes into like kind of unhelpful names like thin scratchy line yeah. or like bumpy <laughs> or... and so now I can't Wait. trace them back I don't know where, I, where they came from but I know they're Kyle Alice, so Alice yeah. I remember um when I was your assistant uh like two years ago um when i first like really got to know you you sent me your brushes that you're using for your project and they were all named stuff like brushy brush and chalky <laughs> brush and yes. they were literally named that i remember this i was yes. thinking about that a couple of days ago brushy but brush, yeah I, bumpy. I can confirm that is i can confirm that is what she did another watercolor Oh, another watercolor <laughs> yeah yeah exactly that's really funny that you bring that up um uh my the brush that i'm using it's not uh kyle's brushes but it's like these brushes i downloaded in uh, like three years ago um what's her name it's like stephanie wutha yeah okay. if you search sketching brushes by wutha like w-o-o-t-h-a it's like on gumroad it's like three brushes and i've been using them on, like like when I use Photoshop like those are the brushes I always use mm. and I'm using one of them right now it's the chalk sponge zero one is what I'm using cool um, but yeah sure. the, yeah her work is it's like supposed to be like a really sketchy kind of brush and I love it mm. yeah that makes sense. um yeah for sure 
Yeah, we also got a bunch of great um, uh, contributions from others in the chat. Um, Amy says she loves the Silent Moon manga and any more manga by Yawaza Ai. Um, nice. And uh, uh, Reverb Mike says Walt Disney's book, The Illusion of Life. Kyle yeah. says they like uh, Aki Iris Go with the Clouds, North by Northwest. And Flo says Lisa Hanawalt's Coyote Dog Girl. Um, Lisa so Hannawalt. yeah, lots, lots of great stuff. Um, I know a lot of people really liked um, Cal Calvin and Hobbes, like as a nostalgic throwback. Um, these oh, are actually always. some of my boyfriends. He has all of the um, the complete collection. But I actually think Calvin and Hobbes is a really great example of it's like this series that is very, uh, I guess, like cartoony, like children. It's like a children's cartoon um, style, but the themes are actually really deep and profound. You know, it's about like oh, facing yeah. your fears yeah. and friendship and love. And um, it's, yeah, it's a great example of like a super compelling series that I think a lot of people yeah. love a lot. Um, funny story. Uh, well, I, I love Calvin and Hobbes as well. Um, and I remember reading like an entire book when I was in, having chicken pox uh, at like age nine oh. or something. Yeah, it was a really good, it was a great day. Um, uh, but so cute. Uh, a couple, couple years ago, um, my brother and I were like getting each other gifts for the holidays. And I, he got me a gift that was, um, it was like the entire collection. I, I believe it might be the same one that uh, you're, partner has Alice but um and I left and I was like okay the gift I got you was a handmade crochet of Hobbs as a tiger like Hobbs Aww. as a stuffed tiger um and it's like really nice and it sits up on its own and it's really sweet that is cute love yeah. it that's really sweet um, um yeah really yeah. really good thinking over there yeah and also Laura Agao um who is also working on her own book I believe um she is yeah feel free to tell us more in the chat uh if you're yeah if you're watching us um Laura says essential books are understanding comics from Scott McCoy which I think yes I have here yes King comics yes, or yes. from Scott McCoy and um reinventing comics from Scott I think I have two of those books. I don't know where they are, but I have. Oh, Understanding Comics and Making Comics by Scott McCloud. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, McCloud. Sorry. Not McCloud. Um, oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah. So, um, what was I going to say? I forgot. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, so, Deb, um, do you mind telling us a little bit about, like, you know, what you're up to now in, in the process? In life. Inking, inking some stuff in. Uh, yeah. So, um, I. I'm probably going to have to reveal that I don't really work on my tablet as much. I usually work on iPad. Um, so mm. this is it's been a while since I've been using my tablet. So I'm kind of like, kind of like sneaking my way through this, um, trying to make the best drawing I can make on Photoshop. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I, right now I'm just inking, like, I don't know how a lot of my, I guess, comics have been more black and white. Like it's just, easier but i know that i have to figure out how to use colors soon um on in the comic format but yeah right now i'm just inking and i'm probably going to figure out a little over time about like what to do after that <laughs> like what am i going to do but i feel like for this time this streaming event i will only have time to do inking and it might just stay that way yeah that makes sense I, f I noticed that i tend to also stay in my comfort zone when i have like a crunch time crunch you know like i Oh, for sure. I feel like this palette is totally my comfort zone that I'm very comfortable with. It like, is very, yeah. Blue to um, pink to yellow pastel. Um, it's a very Alice cool. Lee. Oh, a very thanks. Very Alice Lee aesthetic. Yeah. Some of my faves. Um, yeah. What have you, uh, or go on, oh. it's okay. Oh, I was going to ask, um, what are some things you're excited about, Deb? And I was also going to ask the same question to the chat. Um, I would love to hear what everyone is working on and excited about in general. Um, yeah, because um, this stream basically is on every other week and it's fun to check in with the community that 
tunes into these and um, you know, see like, oh, I ended up making that garden that I said I was gonna do, or I'm working Aww. on learning 3D and I made a game, um, or you know, just different projects that people have. So I'm, I'm curious, what are what are some things you're psyched about? Uh, oh, I was also gonna say, um, you know, today is October 5th. And so we are just under one month away from the presidential election. And <gasps> so I, I want to encourage everyone to vote. Um, Please vote. Yeah, especially because I think most people who are watching this are um, on the younger side of just demographics. And uh, sure. it's really important that we register to vote. And it's the future that, you know, we all are going to live in. Um, so, so one thing that I'm excited about is I um, was contacted by this uh, group called Biden X Design, or like Biden by Design, and it's run by the oh. same people who um, uh, curated the Artists for Obama posters um, in 2012 and 2016, I believe, um, as well as people who were involved in that campaign, and so they're trying to, you know, get artists to create posters and um, also turn it into a community thing. So I made a poster for that and it's going to go oh. live, I think, uh, it's like tomorrow. Um, so I like how it turned out. And I also, I like um, using artwork for this kind of political purpose because I think most people don't see my art as that type of, you know, political, style um yeah. but i i it is one of the more meaningful type of projects that i have really enjoyed like i worked on an illustration for elizabeth warren's campaign last year yeah um so i'm excited for that that's my excited that's thing. super cool holy moly yeah. congrats oh thanks how about yourself dang me um yeah. i so it's funny that we're doing an um an adobe um thing right now but I am also working on some stuff for Adobe Max, um, which Sorry. is, I believe, is their really big project. So I'm working on pretty much your Zoom backgrounds, I think, which is uh, exciting and it seems like a really open, open-ended project. So I'm really excited to see what comes out of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I saw that Tyler, the creator, is going to be there. So if Tyler, the creator, cool. like, I mean, I don't really like listen to Tyler, the creator's music that much, but like, if I like find out that they use my zoom background i'd be like okay that, the end like the i end. End. like i i don't have to work anymore what graphic novel i'm not working on a graphic novel <laughs> yeah um, so that's what i'm excited about um other things i'm not really sure if i can talk about them yet but ooh. um that is my that is the that is the big big thing so far right now that is yeah. uh that is going have to happen but yeah like doing a poster for for I that group is really cool design. that you're doing yeah that. it's cool um also ivy says that they are working on uh, making some flower and kitten embroidery sets for their grandma um oh. so that's so cute love it i love that yeah dang okay wow cute. wait that's so sweet. I, yeah. Physical things are really hard for me to work on. Like, it's, I can't think in 3D spaces ever. Mm. That's why I only do 2D. Oh, interesting. It'd be really cool to see yeah. on a mural. Oh, so I mean, like, okay, so murals are fine because it's still t technically a 2D space. But what I, what I mean by 3D is like working with models or like 3D, pro mm. like 3D programs, like, no, count me out. I can't do that. Like I've tried and I wanted to be good at it, but I just can't think that way. Mm. Um, I've had some pretty messy uh, experiences with working in 3D. Um, I like cut myself a lot with like razor blades because um, I was working in cardboard for school and that was like never again. Like, nope. <laughs> I passed out and it was, it was not good. Never again, yeah. never again. That sounds scary. Um, yeah. So we are, you know, reaching the almost end of the street. We're about are you serious? Five minutes away. 
Um, well, yeah, but I do want to say that we'll be back here tomorrow at the same time, um, working on our comics, um, just chat, chit chatting about life. Um, yeah. And uh, also, you know, tomorrow I'll also share the full schedule for doodle therapy for the rest of the year. And at basically, we're on approximately every other week, um, including like holidays and stuff like that, or factoring in holidays. And every week I'm aiming to bring on basically um, artists who I think are not just talented, but also like interesting and kind and have, you know, inspiring perspectives on different topics. So, um, you know, so this week we have Deb who is sharing her, wow, you did a great job with your piece so far. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> just, just hanging out. Just hanging out. Um, just chilling. It, yeah. And, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll share that tomorrow as well. Um, but yeah, it's fun to uh, be on the stream and chat with everyone. How, um, you, how, or go on, Alice, it's okay. I was, I was also gonna say, if you end up creating a doodle uh, or working on something um, based on what we were talking about during the stream, feel free to share it with me and tag me at by Alice Lee. My title is up there. Um, at by Alice Lee, and I will see it uh, either on Twitter, Instagram, you can message me on Behance. So, yeah. Um, Deb, what were you gonna uh, say? Oh, I was just gonna ask like how many, like how long do these streams, like like how many streams do you have scheduled left? Oh, now I think I, I have almost in spooky season. like five streams left because we have oh, wow. October, November, December, so three, three months. And mm -hmm. that's basically about two streams per month. And then December is like a shorter month because of the holidays. Cool. That's yeah, or five weeks. Oh, I can't believe it's already streams. October. I know. Crazy. Oh. Um, um, are, do you have any Halloween like plans? Oh, um, so I was actually thinking for the um, the stream that's going to be right before Halloween. The next stream after this week is like October 25th or 26th. So I'm, I, th mm -hmm. I think I'm going to dress up for that stream. Um, Ooh, okay. Yeah. What do you, uh, are you, would you like to share that or is this a secret? Oh, I think I'm going to be a witch for one day and then I'm not sure about the second day. So if you were- Are you going to be a cat? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I've been a cat before for just yeah, in general. Yeah, that's what I was and, asking. Yeah. Um, how about yourself, Deb? Um, I, <laughs> my Halloween costume, I, I, it's not like, I don't know if I want to like, I don't know how appropriate it is to say it right now, um, <laughs> but okay. it's really, it's a, it's a joke, um, but. That's funny. I'll, how you about, have intrigued I'll, I'll everyone. I'll post it on my, yeah, I'll I'll uh, put it on my socials um, when I do it because it's a it's a couple's costume with my partner and it's oh, cool. really really funny. It's gonna be so funny. I'll tell you I'll tell you Alice after the after the stream. But I'm so excited. I ordered my costume and everything. Um, but I will okay. post about it on my social on Halloween. All right. If you want to find out what Deb Deb has is talking about, <laughs> uh, if that hasn't sufficiently piqued your interest. Uh, definitely follow her on um, social media. For sure. I think yes. one thing that'd be fun to talk about um, tomorrow and, you know, feel free to send in more questions too if anyone watching has this type of question is um, just like putting yourself out there and like going for it because the way that you and I became friends is you cold emailed me like asking I for did. advice or something or like tips or something and then we got Boba um, yeah, we did. <laughs> and then like we kept in touch and I hired you as my assistant for a couple months and then we yeah. were just been friends. So this is a great example of like, just, you know, be, be genuine and earnest and reach out to people and you might make new friends or even, um, you know, get opportunities and, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, like for, for, for real, like Alice, you were definitely like like one of if not the first illustration mentor i've had like in this Aww. profession so it's yeah so cool like for, see, for real it's so cool to see your growth too and like you know just really coming in your too. into your own um and yeah it's like really cool to see so yeah yeah you too like you like your work changed so much i remember like now you're doing murals and stuff like living living yeah. it up 
So yeah, well, we can talk more about that tomorrow. Just like putting yourself out there. We've oh, talked sure. a lot in the past about like people have asked about promotion and getting opportunities um, yeah. and that sort of thing. So yeah. Um, so we're almost, yeah, we're almost reaching the end of the stream. Um, got about a minute left. So I just wanted to say thanks to everyone for joining. Um, zooming out really quick. Um, you know, I worked on a, one panel of my piece, um, but you can kind of start to see how it's going to form. And Deb made so much progress on her. Um, <laughs> I'm on literally her just comic. scribbling. I'm like, I can't draw on a Wacom tablet. It's so hard. It looks great. Um, Thank you. So yeah, we'll be back here again tomorrow at 2.30 Pacific time um on tuesday uh to continue talking about comics and uh we'll be joined with our yeah. special guest deb so thanks again for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow bye see ya oops <laughs> <laughs>